Fifty fifty centers, man. This CLZ app is kicking my butt, and I got to figure it out because I want all my entire comic books in the CLZ app, and I'm getting there. I'm getting close, but yeah, here we go. Defiant Comics number four. I like I like that story. I read the first couple so far. Um, it's got some uh, watercolor paints, and I like the story. Uh, this dude right here can see the. Uh, weird spirits on people and he's the only ones seemingly you could stop them. So it's pretty cool. Here's number five. Like I said I like the watercolors. I guess Jim Shooter started this company in the early 90s. And I don't know how well I don't know how well it went. This guy's really worked hard back in the day to make things uh, happen. Hey, Dark Dominion number seven. See, so I'm, I'm getting close to uh, completing that. 1988, Dreadstar, 37. It's Jim Starlin, it's first. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I'm picking that up, um, but I'm just gonna get it all and try reading it. I do like weird sci fi. Okay, 1992. Eagle, the Dark Mirror Saga. Isn't that cool? It's two or four by Jack Herman, who uh, did the writing, and Neil Vokes did the uh, pencils or the art. Let's take a look at this. It's black and white, but I, I like this kind of stuff, you know? Gather of steam. That's pretty scary, right? So do some Halloween stuff. A lot of people don't like black and white, but uh, if you really look at it, it's, it's, it's fun to look, it's fun to uh, read. And I like this, you know, early 90s, 1992. It's fun to get on the cheap, right? 50 cents. So yeah, Eagle, the Dark Mirror set. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Okay, 1986. Elementals special. Comico. I don't know much about Elementals, but... This comic looked pretty cool. It's a cool game fold for 50 cents. At least for children, if you look at the top. It's pretty scary, right? It's Bill Gillingham with the pencils. Jack Herman uh, wrote this. But yeah, on the cheap, you know. Got she both rip off there. I'm sure she's cooler. <laughs> 1986, I like it. That's cool. Okay, 1987, from Renegade Press, Eternity Smith. I guess that's four or five. And, uh, yeah, 1987, I like that. 1986, Lord of the Ultra Realm. Look at that. It's number two. And the colorist is Liz uh, Baroub. And I bring her up because it's, it's start, it does pop. It's written by uh, Doug uh, Manke. The art's by Pat Broderick. Pretty cool, right? Looks like a cool story. Oh, there's these splash pages in the end here. Hey, look at those colors. I like weird fantasy stuff. Yeah, Lords of the Ultra Realm. Psychedelic uh, fantasy. Pretty cool. Madness. Okay, 1985. Nexus uh, Legends, this is like a reprint. I think first reprinted the original Nexus like a year later or two later. It's written by Mike Barron, who I think uh, did Badger. And Steve Rude does the art. That's pretty damn cool. Here's uh, number seven of the original series, and we'll take a look at that. Okay, 1986. Steve Rude. Very cool. Of course, we got a badger appearance in this. So 
So the first had a shared universe. That's cool. I like it. Okay, Nexus number nine, Legends. It, it, it corresponds to the original series too, so number nine means number nine. Which I like. Number nine, number nine. Hey, the Survivors number two, 1983. Uh, Spectrum comic books, that looked really cool. 1989, Warlock five, yeah, that's book two. Uh, the series is called book two, but it's the number one. Filthy Fifty Center. And I read the second one, I think, in the original series, and I really enjoyed it. It reminds me of Big Elbow. Big Elbow grew up on this stuff, I think. But if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, uh, yeah, the air cell stuff, it's, it's really cool. Hey, 1993, number one. Warrior of Plasm. I can start reading that now. I, I enjoy the other one, as you know. And, uh, yeah, I enjoy these Defiant. Some of these Defiants were pretty good. Okay, We Live number two. I got that for 50 cents. And the, people were making a big deal out of We Live when they first came out. So, pretty happy about that. Number three. So number one isn't as expensive as it once was. Yeah, Melvin. Melvin Comics, right? Malvinizes Wolverine and, and Batman. Dark Claw number one. It's probably trash. But um, I got it anyway. Hey, Batman the Return of uh, Bruce Wayne number 4. I got that for a buck or two. I think I bought it. But yeah, I, I, I got the first one from Grant Morrison or something. Grant Morrison, his Batman was pretty cool. Uh, I wasn't really blown away by it, but I'm sure there was parts of it that were awesome. I just I didn't read all of it. Uh, number 2. Classic Batman Legends of the Dark Knight number one. This is like the C cover. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have, I have one of the covers. Batman and Shadow and Bat number one. Night, Night Quest for a buck. Pretty cool. I'm going to check that out. I, I grab anything Batman and just got it. Just got it. It's not a Especially stuff in the 90s that I missed. And Zero, Legendary Team. I got you know, Scott Snyder and Greg Kulu. I have some of these, but we have a zero issue. And uh, that's a modern day classic. Introduces uh, the core of the islands and why I really enjoy that. Hey, for a buck, Batman 526, 525, 510, cool cover by Billy uh, Jones. Hey, we're, we're in the early 90s now. This is uh, 4, 479, written by Alan Grant, and uh, drawn by uh, Tom Mandrake, which I like. I like, I like him a lot. I like Batman. I know, I know he's overplayed and all this stuff, but to me, I never really, you know, I, I respect my friends who uh, are huge Batman fans all their whole life. But I didn't burn myself out on Batman, and now I appreciate that. It's kind of like a, a Jungian archetype now or something. Not that I'm an expert on Jungian archetypes, but... It's cool art for a dollar. Four seventy-eight. Four hundred one. We're in the late eighties now. I think that's nineteen eighty-seven. Trevor Von Eden does. Trevor Von Eden does the uh, art within there. This might be a first appearance of this lady. There's like, I don't know, I mean, there's like five different covers or something. And that changes. Okay, nineteen eighty-four. Daredevil. Two hundred eight. David Mazzuchelli. Pretty cool. I'm working on my Daredevil and I'm really closing some gaps now. Look at this. Being a nice challenge. Draws a pretty dang good Daredevil. Just 
almost all the way through almost. This kind of is freaking great. Oh, what a great time. And I skipped a whole bunch of great pages. So we'll sleep on that one at 208. You can find that at the same price. Okay, 206. Dennis O'Neill wrote Daredevil for a while too, so I can't wait to read that. Once I complete Cloak and Dagger, Volume 2, <laughs> I'm going to start with Miller Daredevil and just go. I'm reading like like seven or eight different series. i gotta got to cap it off somehow. And I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, we don't have your father yet, but... Uh... <laughs> 200, yeah, pretty cool, right? Pretty dang awesome. Okay, 1981. Daredevil 170. That's the first appearance of Kingpin in Daredevil. Kingpin becomes his one of his major villains, of course. Thanks to Frank Miller, who actually uh, writes and draws in this one. Cool. Very happy I could start reading Daredevil soon where I want to. For a while I didn't know where I was going to start reading it, you know. Exciting stuff. In 1981, right? Sixty-four, awesome. His origin retold or gone in depth. Palmer. <laughs> That's a little in Palmer, right? I like here though. One sixty-three. That's a that's a duplicate, which I'll probably send out to my buddy who likes to ship out his duplicates. Once again, Palmer. Dun, dun, dun. Nineteen eighty. One sixty two. Steve Ditko does the uh, artwork in that, so he's famous for you know who. Anyway, please check the uh, description for other comic book uh, channels, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>